To the 2016 elections now, or as we're calling this segment, Party Problems, Part 1, the Democrats. Bernie Sanders' campaign manager now says the Democratic National Committee is, quote, actively trying to undermine the Vermont senator's campaign. The DNC blocked the Sanders campaign from a key voter database after a Sanders staffer searched and saved the info that the Clinton campaign put into that database. And there is late word tonight that the Sanders campaign is now and has filed suit against the DNC trying to get access to that database. And all of this on the eve of another Democratic debate tomorrow. What's that you say? You didn't know there was a debate scheduled for tomorrow? Or you're wondering why the party would hold a debate on a Saturday night when almost nobody will watch? You are not alone, prompting more questions about why the party is scheduling debates in a way that appears designed to get as little attention as possible. And Jerry, I want to start with you. I, I want to go back to what the campaign manager for Bernie Sanders says, that the DNC is actively trying to undermine his campaign. There's quite a bit of evidence that they may in fact be doing that. You know, you're right. There, there is evidence that it might be happening. I'm not really surprised, but I also say it's a lot of inside baseball. I was listening to the explanation of all this going on, and I can tell you a lot of voters don't really care about the machinations in this intra-party intra duel. Well, the specifics of the lawsuit and the access to the database, yeah, even I was having a hard time following that. But, you know, Dominic, you're going to put the debate on a Saturday night, the second one in a row that's on a Saturday night. It's almost like they don't want anybody watching to protect Hillary? Well, as someone who has moderated a debate with mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton, I can tell you for fact that is exactly the reason. Really? Because when we did the debate with Hillary Clinton, the ground rules, and we agreed to them, was that um, no live audience meaning uh, no, no students. It was up at the University of Rochester. There were all these ground rules that the Clinton camp had. And so I know, having been in the hot seat, this has the fingerprints of the Clinton team all over it. Why else would you hold a debate, uh, a Democratic debate, when you're having very few debates to begin with on a Saturday night? And she's actually pretty good at this. I mean, I, I know she's, she's careful and cautious. That's, and that's not it. the point whether she, she's good enough. But she's pretty good at this, and at least she has been in the last couple of debates. But Scott, isn't this exactly the opposite of what the party is supposed to do? The party's not supposed to play favorites. They're supposed to be equal opportunity for everybody. Well, they are, um, but she's more equal than others. <laughs> so, so that's how that works. <laughs> but, but, I think, you know, but I think you're right. She, she is articulate. Uh, whether you like her policies or not, she presents, I think, a, a, her concern, her worry is almost like Barbara Streisand. You know, I, I might get caught l looking not perfect. Or I might have something I say that someone can use against me. And, and it's that, that fear, which is unfounded in a presidential debate. You've got to be ready for that kind of stuff, I think, is what drives it. Because ordinarily, she's pretty articulate. This, this strikes me as being bad for Hillary in the long run, though. It, it's, she's not getting prepared for what will eventually be, in all likelihood, a general election debate. She doesn't get a chance to counter Bernie Sanders, who does have some enthusiastic crowds that support him and, and certainly has the edge on the progressive left. And... All the enthusiasm is with the Republicans right now. They're, everybody was talking about the Republican debate on Tuesday night. Nobody's going to be talking about this debate, Jerry. You're absolutely right. I mean, I think there was, what, 19 or 20 million people watching the Republican debate. And what do you think the number will be on Saturday? Five? Yeah, five people, right? No, five. 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 Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> well, gentlemen, the, 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 but you, got it, you have it wrong. The goal is not to entertain the electorate or educate the... The goal is to win the nomination. And why would she want to share a statement? really with Bernie Sanders for what reason I mean he's gonna be on the stage but what reason would Hillary Clinton want to really engage with a Bernie Sanders who has no chance at all of winning the nomination but the goal is also to win the general election and right, right now the GOP like you go on social media and there's so many more people talking about the Republicans than are talking about the Democrats. There seems to be more enthusiasm on the Republican side than the wait. Democratic the, side. The election is not tomorrow. No, no, I understand just wait. that. I understand just that. Wait. But is there a risk of sort of ceding the spotlight to the GOP this for this law? You know, I think whenever you're talking about Hillary Clinton, though, they're not always talking about the positive. They're, you know, talking about Benghazi. They're talking about emails. So I think in her case, she's probably happy they're not talking about her at this moment. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think she'll mm -hmm. want to go up mm -hmm. and. And, and debate later on, but right now I think she's probably pleased that she doesn't have to defend her whole email trail. And, that and, sort and of quite thing. frankly, the Republicans aren't distinguishing themselves in their debates. And most of the candidates, they're going after each other.
other. I think there's, you know, there's such a divide there, and you, of course you got the Trumpisms. Uh, I, I think that's probably, in the long run, I think the debates with the Republicans are going to hurt the party overall. All right. And speaking of the party, or at least the leader of the party as it stands right now, today was the day that President Obama gave his final press conference of 2015. He took questions about ISIS, Syria, the spending bill that passed, including the Zadroga bill. Now, normally we would play you some sound from the president, but instead, wanted to show you this video of a viewer watching the press conference earlier today. Because I think this is about the time when he was talking about the spending. Oh, <laughs> this was a, a pretty low energy President Obama. And in all seriousness, this was a dull press conference. Very low energy from the president. His two best lines were that he's never been more optimistic about a year than he is right now. And in 2016, he says, I'm going to leave it all out on the field. But I said it with more energy than he did. And then there was the line where he said he had to leave the press conference to go see Star Wars. I, that was seriously the second best line of the entire press conference. The president then headed to California to meet with victims of the San Bernardino shooting, and he heads tonight to Hawaii for his annual family vacation. What's going on with the president? I mean, he, he, would, he was checked out on that speech to the nation from the Oval Office. He was checked out at the press conference today. Where's, where's his mojo? Oh, you know, that was uh, totally a performer uh, press conference or whatever you want to call it, and I agree. I'm glad you showed that clip because I think he could have put an, an insomniac asleep or into REM sleep at that point. <laughs> I mean, he didn't say anything, and he hasn't said anything for weeks now, and I think the problem is is people really want him to be, to clarify his position, to show leadership, and to talk about, you know, the... Uh, ISIS and terrorism. I mean, I think there was a poll out recently that nearly 80% of people do not feel safe in this country. They are afraid of a lone wolf attack. Really, I think today he talked, he acknowledged that fear, but he didn't talk about how do you stop it. You know, it, it, this begs two questions. The first is, has the president checked out? And the second is when he says he's going to leave it all on the field in 2016. We'll get to that one in a second. But do you, do you feel like the president's checked out? Do you feel like he's just counting the days? There, there's something wrong. I mean, I think there really is. I think he's gliding. I think he was tone deaf uh, on the whole issue of terrorism. I mean, to go visit San Bernardino this late just because you're on your way to Hawaii almost is, I mean, it, it doesn't, doesn't smell right. And, and his comments about, even his comments about terrorism and, and what we're doing about it, we're going to follow the course. But, but people don't know what it is. He seems like he's just waiting for the next guy to take over which is really very sad. I mean, but he seems that way. And this press conference is almost like, you know, let's see what happens, folks. But he's the leader. Dominic? I, I think uh, the goal, you may be onto something when you talk about terrorism, but let's, let's be fair to Mr. Obama, and I've been critical of him at times. The goal today was not to make any news. That's what his goal was. It's a mandatory end of the year news conference out the door, en route for family vacation, where unless something goes terribly wrong, he gets to hide for the next two weeks. He was not there to make news today. And let's be, let's be honest, how many of you do your best work the day before you go on vacation? <laughs> I mean, there is, I, there is some I point. leave it all on the field when I go on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what do we, th the, the, the idea of leaving it all on the field in 2016, is there any, what can this president do in his final year in office? Clearly there are things he can do. I guess the question is, will he, and how active is he going to be from the Oval Office, and how much is he going to insert himself in the 2016 race, Jerry? Well, I think he, as he said today, he's clearly going to support a Democrat, no surprise there. Right. Um, and he said some of uh, his uh, best work gets done in the final quarter. We'll see. I mean, he, he does have time to do some things, but um, today is just another example of not articulating a plan, a strategy. I think we're ready. I think we're very ready to hear what are we going to do against terrorism? How are you going to improve the economy? What, what, what is your kind of grand vision? What is your legacy? I'd love to see a nothing to lose president. Do you think Obama will be that in, the, in his final year? Uh, I, I, I wouldn't say a nothing to lose. I would say 2016 will be a banner year for him in terms of I really think he's going to give you everything he's got. Everything he's wanted to do but could not do because of partisan politics from day one, you're going to see in 2016. And frankly, this is the first black president. And so you're going to see the real Obama in this year. That is quite a tease. And so is this. Still to come on RFL, we said our look at party problems would be bipartisan, and so the Republicans are up next. And that, of course, means this man, Donald Trump. He have the semi-endorsement from Vladimir Putin and also of the group looking to bomb a Disney cartoon. I'm not kidding. You'll want to hear this one next. <laughs>